All right, so I'm installing the roof lights from a Jeep Liberty onto my Ford Explorer. And what I wanted to do was use this original bracket, which comes from the Jeep Liberty that has the switch mounted into it. So this little shape has everything I need to kind of copy and transfer onto some other kind of form of plastic or what have you, which in my case, I'm gonna use the side panel on my Explorer, which is a fifth generation Ford Explorer. So I'm just gonna put some tape to cover over it. I'm using scotch tape mainly because that's the first thing I saw when I looked up. Uh, you could pretty much use scotch tape, masking tape you know, all over, or you know, any kind of tape basically. And the main reason why I'm using tape is because after I do a cutout of this shape, I'm gonna have that tape as the backing to be able to stick it onto the surface and now I'll be able to draw a general diagram, shall we say, or, or a template for cutting out on my original surface to be able to put in this OEM switch. So now I've got masking tape on it and I've got the scotch tape on it. I'm basically checking it out, making sure it's in there nice and flat and solid, and it is. Now I'm gonna use basically like a craft knife. Now, the craft knife that I'm using right now, I've used it so many times, the blade is kind of dull, but I like the fact that it has a really good defined point, and I can manipulate it very easily by twisting and turning, similar to how a pencil and writing would be. Of course, you can use a razor blade, box cutter, straight edge blade, you know, whatever you have to do it, but um, I just like using these little craft tools because of uh, the manipulability of it, even though it's a little bit harder right now to cut through this paper, mainly because <laughs> my blade is dull and I'm kind of lazy with buying a new blade. Gonna speed it up. A lot of this process is just kind of, this is what you're doing and this is how I did it. So we're gonna just zoom right through it. Those corners right here are very important because you want to get that cut out perfectly because that's your tabs that the switch clicks into to hold it in position perfectly even without twisting or anything like that. So those tabs are very important. So you want to make sure you cut those tabs out nicely. There you are, and once you have it trimmed, you have a perfect little template that you can use with a sticky surface on the back as well. So the switch, which is the OEM switch from the Jeep Liberty, has like different little tabs and, and clips and what have you on the back of it, and it helps to secure it in place. So this is showing you how the position of it is, OEM style, which tells you what direction is up and down when you place it on your source, which in, again, my case is gonna be on my side A-pillar plastic for my Ford Explorer, as you see here. So I've decided to put it there it's a little bit of a far reach, but I'm tall, so it's not too bad. I can reach it fairly easy. And behind there, it's mostly empty. So the large switch actually fits behind there or should fit behind there very nicely. So I'm just making sure it's straight. I don't want a weird angle. Now I'm pretending that I'm like reaching up to turn it on and off. So that little A pillar just kind of slides off and pulls off. And then I'll take my, you know, craft knife. And I basically kind of draw around the edges of it to get the lines and then that's going to have my template lines transferred onto the surface now if i had a little i think it's called a dremel tool um, this would be fairly easy to do i do not have a dremel tool which is why i'm going with the old school soldering iron with a really good point heat it up melt the plastic in different places uh, kind of making like little dots or perforations along the main guideline and then cut that out. Maybe one day I will invest in a little Dremel tool because as time has gone by I've really 
could have used something that cuts very easily. Now I've just basically got a little carving knife that I'm using and just trimming things. So when I first cut it out, I cut it a little bit smaller than needed because I can always trim it wider rather than cutting it too big and then what you're gonna do to start over. That's really hard to do. So I trimmed it out a little bit small and now what I'm doing is just kinda flattening out the edges, squaring it up, making sure the tabs are in place. Now I'm gonna do a test fit with the switch, knowing the position of it. Feels good, but it doesn't go all the way down. So that's fine with me. I'd rather it not go all the way down. I can trim a little bit more off of it, as opposed to it being too big and it's like, oh man, now I gotta go find another A-pillar piece and start cutting all over again or use some glue or, or plastic and kinda repair to shrink the edge and, and put it in there. But I want it to be something that simply would snap in and snap out. So now I think I have the fitment just right with the little tabs in it, as you see so that when I take the switch and slide it into place, it's a nice snug fit. Now you have a little bit of curve on the sides, but you know what, I'm okay with that. I'm not even gonna worry about filling it in or anything. I'm just gonna let it be because in general, I think it looks really good. Now let's go look at it in my car. So basically over there. Now once I wire this up, when I turn on my night lights, the light itself will be kind of illuminated. And then I'll be able to activate the lights on and off by just simply pushing forward and that switch is in a really good position. There were other locations that I maybe could have put it with just a simple button, but I really like using that OEM switch from the Jeep Liberty, uh, mainly because of the look, because of the trim and it saves a little bit money just using that OEM since I got the whole thing complete from the junkyard. Thanks for watching.